my name is Time Dazzler, and this is going to be my first ever New World video. I'm going to be sharing a lot of knowledge with you guys today. I have been playing this game since the preview event, and then I was invited into the closed alpha. And right here today, we are on the last day of the closed beta. And I wasn't planning on doing any, you know, content creation for this game, but I noticed that a lot of the YouTubers out there haven't done any videos about perks. And perks are going to be essential for end game builds. And since this is the last day of the beta, we're going to have to wait until August 31st to see some of these again. So I want to get this content and this knowledge out there as soon as possible. So what are perks, right? You go to a trading post and you can see all of them. These are all of the perks available in the game. Amazon Game Studios will obviously, you know, buff and nerf these, change them, add new ones. So what you see is kind of limited in scope, but just know that these are the ones that were available in the beta. Okay, and there's two types that I'm going to be talking about for PvP. There are general combat perks, or at least what I'm calling general combat perks, and these are things that are always going to be active as long as you have that equipment equipped. So for example, um, here is one right here, right? Focused. This is just a general perk. Um, let me show you the items. So for example, we can find focused on jewelry, right? And it just gives you 7.9 mana regen. There's no trigger effect. The only trigger is having the item on your character, right? Whereas other perks are going to be what I'm going to be calling combat ability perks. Accelerated Defiance Stance. The trigger is d triggering Defiance Stance, which is an ability, right? So when I use this ability, then that perk activates and then I gain that movement speed, right? So two different types of perks I'm going to be talking about. Also, with perks, notice that, like, for example, if I go to, let's just do Rapier, for example. I'm going to show off Keen Tondo. Um, I wish I could search by name, but I cannot, so bear with me. And this video is going to be very, very long. You can see how many of these there are. So I'm going to select Keen Tondo, which is a Rapier perk, and then I'm also going to select um, Sundering Repost, okay? I have a spreadsheet that I'm looking at, just bear in mind. Um, where is Sundering Repost? Here it is. Okay, exclusive perk selected. Um, they cannot be selected at the same time. Now, what this means is that an item cannot have both of these perks okay but what that doesn't mean is that you cannot equip both of them so for example right here on this helmet i have thundering repost right and then if you look below i have keen tondo so it's not saying that you cannot equip two different items with two different perks it's just saying that Two perks cannot be on the same piece of item. And then we also can notice that I have Keen Tondo a second time, right? And this one is 6.1%. This one is 4%. Now, guys, unfortunately, I have very limited time in this beta. It is the last day. So I do not know if perks stack or not. It might be on a case-by-case -case scenario where... Some of them do, and some of them do not. Maybe the general perks, the ones that are always active as long as you have the equipment on your character, maybe those stack, and maybe the ability-altering ones do not stack. Um, I don't know. That's something that we're going to have to test on release, okay? Unfortunately, I don't have an answer. So, with that out of the way... Let's get into the bread and the butter and the bones and the meat, right? What are the best PvP perks in this game? Now, obviously, this is my opinion, but I have gone through this entire list and I have selected all of them for you. And I'm going to break down this video by the general perks first, 
And then I'm going to give you guys the individual weapon perks. And when I say weapon perks, I mean the ability altering perks, okay? So let's start with the general perks. The first one is going to be enchanted. Let me find it. Um, there it is. Okay. Light and heavy attacks deal 5 to 9.5% more damage. This is very, very strong. And this is a perk that you can get on weapons. Right? Um, also notice that... Where is it? It says 5 to 9.5%. What that is scaled off of is the tier. So if I go to the trading post and I sort by tier, one more time, tier 5 you can see this one is 8.7%, so it's almost 9.5, where if I go to the lower tiers, this one is 5.7%. So there's no like crafting, scaling, or anything. I think it's just random and it's based on whatever tier weapon you get. The higher tier will have the higher effect. And, guys, this is a very strong general perk. The combat in this game is very light and heavy attack focused. Light and heavy attack scale really well. You know, 120%, 160%. So, very, very strong general perk. It's always going to be active. All you have to do is just light and heavy attack. Alright, the next perk that we're going to be talking about is going to be Fortified Recovery. When you are hit while below 50% health, gain 30% fortify for 5 seconds, 90% cooldown. So 30% fortify is 30 seconds of damage reduction. Um, obviously very, very strong for PvP. And I believe you can get this on... Um, I believe it's jewelry. But I'm not sure. Okay, there's no cell orders right now. It might be armor, I don't know. Fortunately, a lot of this information we'll find out on release, but very strong perk, 30% damage reduction when you fall below 50% health. Um, a lot of healing bonuses apply when you're below 50% health, so your healer is going to have more time to react and heal you since you're taking less damage. Alright, next perk is going to be health. This is, I believe, a jewelry perk. You gain 3 to 9.4% more maximum health. Um, again, no cell orders, unfortunately, but I'm pretty sure that it's jewelry from what I remember in the closed alpha. 9.4% more max health, like um, end game, you typically have around 8,000 to 9,000 health. So you're going to be gaining about 800 more health per, per, per item that has this perk with it. So that's a lot. That's very strong in PvP. Next perk is going to be Healthy Toast, right next to it. When you drink a mana potion, gain 3 to 9.4% of your max health. Now the reason why this is very strong in PvP is, for example, I'm going to use a health potion right here, right? Health potions and mana potions have separate cooldowns. So I'm going to drink my health potion, and I can still drink my mana potion afterwards. So even if I'm like a full stamina build where I have nothing consuming mana, I can still chug mana potions and gain HP if I have this perk. That's why this is very, very strong in PvP. 10% of your max health, again, you're going to have about 9,000 health end game. That's 1,000 healing, or 900 healing, that you're going to get for chugging a mana potion. Very, very strong perk in PvP. Um, yeah, let's keep going, because this video is going to be very long. <laughs> Again, these are all just general perks right now, guys. Alright, next one is going to be Keen. 3 to 11% critical strike chance. And I might as well just do Keen Awareness as well. Also, 3 to 11% critical strike chance. Keen applies to weapons. You can see it's only a weapon perk. And then... Keen Awareness is a jewelry perk. Let me find it. So unfortunately, um, nobody's selling it right now, but I can confirm that it is a jewelry perk. So you're going to get 22% critical strike chance for having both of those equipped. 
That's going to be very, very strong. Um, especially if you combine it later on with Vicious. So let me find Vicious really quick. It's going to be towards the bottom. Vicious is going to give you 3 to 11% critical damage. And I believe that this is on weapons. Yes, it is. So if you got, you know, keen awareness on your jewelry and then you combined it with Vicious on your weapon, it's going to be a very strong combo. Excellent for PvP damage. Alright, let's keep going. The next awesome perk for PvP is going to be Regenerating. This is a jewelry perk. Let me find it. Um, regenerating, okay. Gain about 0.5% of your maximum health per every second. This is so strong, guys. If we look at... This is a jewelry perk, by the way. You can see it's on jewelry. If you look at food buffs, right? Afterwards, recover 1% of your maximum health every 2.5 seconds. That regenerating is going to give you half of that every one second. It's going to be very, very strong. A lot of healing. You're going to be const It's like having health regen in other MMORPGs. It's going to be great for long-term fights, dueling especially. So definitely a very, very strong perk. Now, obviously, if you're trying to play like a tank, maybe sword and board in PvP, very strong perk. Um, if you're trying to play a DPS, maybe not so much. You would probably rather want to have keen focus, like I was saying. Okay. Next, we have um, keen jagged. Hold on, did I skip something? I did, okay. So let me find keen jagged really quick. Keenly Jagged. On crit, cause a bleed that deals 7% weapon damage per second for 10 seconds. So 70% total. The reason why this is good is a lot of passives in this game, for example the Spear, gain 15% critical strike chance against a target with a bleed. So if you're not using an ability that applies a bleed, you can use... You know, you can just get a random crit and apply the bleed for you and then gain 15% critical strike chance. This is just one example. There's a lot of weapons in the game that have bonuses to people who are bleeding. Very, very strong perk. Um, if you're going to be playing Spear, you're definitely going to want that. 100%. Alright, let's keep going. Mortal Power is going to be the next perk. Let me find it. Um, mortal power, okay. When you kill something, gain 15% damage. Empowered is basically damage for 5 seconds, 5 second cooldown. Now, this is going to be a weapon perk. You can see it's only on weapons. It's going to be good on weapons like rapier, you know, great axe. It's going to be very strong, but I think where this perk shines is going to be staff and ice gauntlet. Staff and Ice Gauntlet with the Meteor Shower and Ice Gauntlet with the AoE Slow that deals damage. Think about how many people in wars are stacking on flags and are stacking on points. If you kill one of them, the remainder of your damage is going to be amplified by 15%. It's also going to be a very strong perk for 1vx when you're fighting multiple opponents by yourself. You kill one of them and then you're going to be able to kill the next target as well much faster. Very good perk. Um, Again, Fire Staff and Ice Gauntlet, I believe it's going to be stronger, but it's still going to be good on the other weapons as well. Alright, let's continue. Next we have Refreshing Toast. Let me find this one. Um, where are you? There it is, okay. Potions cool down 28% faster. Potion chugging in PvP is very strong. You're going to be able to have multiple jewelry pieces. So you could get, you know, 64% faster potion cooldowns. Sorry, is that math right? 
something like that. Around around 60%, 56% faster healing on your potions. Now, I believe this applies to mana potions as well. So if we talk about that previous perk where you're, when you drink a mana potion, it heals you, it's going to be a very strong combination. So keep that in mind. Very good perk for PvP. Next we have um, Sacred. This is going to be a healing perk. All of your healers are going to want this. 3 to 8.5% outgoing healing. Like Healing is already very strong. If you're going to play a healer, you're going to need this. It's on jewelry. Um, there's probably not going to be any available. Oh, there's one. But it's on jewelry. It's going to increase your outgoing healing. If you're playing a healer, you need this. End of story. <laughs> All right. Next one is stamina recovery. Let's see if I can find it. Um, here it is. When you are hit while below 50%, gain 50 to 95 stamina, 30 second cooldown. Very strong. Um, you know, if you fall below 50%, we already talked about fortified recovery. It's going to give you 30% damage reduction, and this is going to give you 50 to 95% stamina. So it's basically like a free get out of jail card. Um, obviously, it kind of depends on what armor you're using, but it. Say I fall below 50% health, I'm going to be able to start spamming dodge rolls and escaping my enemies. And basically, maybe that'll buy me enough time to get hit by a heal. Maybe it'll buy me enough time to drink a potion. Maybe it'll dodge an incoming you know, projectile or incoming ability. So very, very strong for PvP. Alright, next perk is going to be Sturdy. And you want this one, not the fishing. You take 9.5% less stamina damage while blocking. If you're going to play a sword and board in PvP, this is very, very strong. Because you're going to have higher uptime on... You're going to have higher uptime on this ability right here. While blocking, reduce damage to all allies within 2 meters by 30%. Since you're taking less stamina damage, you're going to be able to block more, and you're going to be able to shield your allies and reduce their damage more. Very strong if you're going to play like a pure tank in PvP. Very, very strong. Also might be good in dueling. You're able to block a lot of attacks in dueling before you run out of stamina. And this is just going to amplify that even further. Alright. That's it, guys, for the general perks. Um, again, these are perks that are always active. They're not triggered by abilities. Next, we're going to be talking about ability altering perks. They are triggered by when you activate an ability. We're going to start with the rapier weapon. There are three perks that stood out to me. And the first one is going to be Keen Tondo. I've already talked about this one. Increases critical strike chance by 11% against targets affected by Tondo's bleed. Tondo is very, very easy to apply. You can hit multiple people. So that's a lot of critical strike chance that you're able to gain. The next one is going to be Omnidirectional. Um, let me get rid of that. So the Adagio upgrade is applied when evading in any direction. Let me show you what that means. So here's Adagio. When you evade forward, you gain 15% damage on your next light attack. Basically, when you evade left or right, you're going to also be gaining that buff instead of just when you evade forward. And it, this synergizes very, very well with the final Rapier passive. 25% increased damage on your next light. So you're going to gain 40% increased damage on your next light instead of 25%. And it's going to be in any direction. Very, very strong for PvP. If you're playing Rapier, you're pretty much going to need this. Alright, and then the final one for Rapier is going to be Sundering Repost. I've already kind of talked about this one as well. Mm. Here it is. Repost grants Ren, reducing target's damage absorption by 14% for 10 seconds. Very, very long duration. You're able to hit multiple people with the stun. And also, reducing their damage afterwards is going to make you tankier, where Rapier is already kind of like a glass cannon weapon. 
So you're definitely going to want this. It's going to make you take less damage, especially in dueling. And again, Rapier is already kind of a dueling-based weapon. So those are all of the perks that stood out for me for the Rapier weapon. Next, we're going to be doing Sword and Shield. The very first one that I like is Accelerated Defiant Stance. Movement speed is very strong in this game. Um, it's going to allow you to catch up to people, which is pretty hard to catch up to people right now. There's not a lot of gap closers and movement speed buffs in the game. 28% movement speed for 5 seconds when triggering Defiant Stance. Defiant Stance is also an ability that you're going to use when you're taking a lot of damage. And when your health, maybe, you know, if you have like an emergency situation, you're going to want to take less damage. So you pop Defiant Stance, and then you run away from your enemies. It's going to be very strong and allow you to basically get out of jail for free. Very, very strong perk if you plan on using Sword and Board, and you plan on using Defiant Stance. Defiant Stance is an excellent PvP ability, as is. It's very, very strong. Gives you 15% of your max health. Super awesome. Next perk we're going to be talking about is Fortified... Shield Rush. Uh, here it is. After hitting a target with Shield Rush, gain Fortify, increasing your damage absorption by 19%. The reason why this is good is Shield Rush is a gap closer. So you're going to be gap closing in, you're going to be getting the attention of your foes, and then afterwards you're going to be taking 19% less damage from the target that you hit. But yeah, very, very strong. Um, Sword and Shield already has a lot of defense, and this is just going to be amplifying your defense even further. Especially if you plan on not blocking, right? There's no point of having damage absorption active when you're blocking, because you're not going to be taking any damage anyways. So after you Shield Rush and you have this perk, you're going to start light attacking, heavy attacking, using your abilities that deal damage. And then once this perk is inactive, then you're going to start blocking again. Um, very strong for PvP. The final one we're going to be talking about is Repulsing Shield Bash, at least for the Sword and Board. Shield Bash knocks targets back an additional 25 to 93%, depending on the tier. Very, very strong for PvP, um, especially if you're fighting on like capture points. You're going to be able to knock people outside of the flag so they're not able to capture the point, essentially. Also, Shield Bash already has a stun. You're kind of getting like a double dip here by also getting a knockback. Very, very strong for PvP. Alright, that's it for the Sword and Shield. Next up is going to be Musket. There are three perks that stood out to me. Um, the first one is Crippling Powder Burn. Sorry guys, I'm trying to rush through this because this video is going to be very long. Um, crippling Powder Burn. Targets hit with Powder Burn are slowed by 23% for 5 seconds. Powder Burn is very strong for PvP, gives you a damage over time, and a lot of musket passes. You're going to be dealing more damage to people affected by crowd control. 10% extra damage to targets with the slow. So if you're not using Sticky Bomb with the Sticky Slow, if you're not using Stopping Power with the slow, you're going to be able to get a slow with your Powder Burn, and you're going to be able to take advantage of this 10% extra damage. Very, very strong. So say you wanted to go like Powder Burn, Shooting Stance, and Trapper. Um, you would still be able to gain 10% extra damage every time that you do Powder Burn. Super strong for the Musket. Next perk is going to be Empowering Shooter Stance. Oops. Hitting a target while in shooting stance, shooting stance you have 5 bullets, remember that, grants you empower, increasing your damage by 22% for 3 seconds. So imagine you're in shooting stance, you hit your first shot on your opponent, all of your next shots afterwards are going to have 22% increased damage for 3 seconds. It's going to make your shooting stance very, very burst damage focused, especially if you can hit your shots. If you're an FPS player, you definitely want this perk, okay? The next perk is going to be Vorpal. This is a general perk, guys. But I've only included it on the bow and the musket. Let me show you. You can see you can only get this on bows and muskets. And basically what this does is it increases your headshot damage. Right? 5 to 14% headshot damage, very, very strong for the musket and for the bow. 
Reason being is musket and bow gain a lot of passives to headshot damage already, right? When you land a headshot, you deal 20% more damage. If I go to the musket, also grants a 15% damage increase to all headshots. Like, very, very strong. You're going to be dealing a lot of damage if you can aim for the head. Um, very strong perk. And that's going to apply to the bow as well as the musket. So that was my final musket perk. Since I've already talked about one of the bow perks, which is Vorpal, obviously. Let's talk about the next bow perk. So Vorpal, obviously, you know, 14% increased head damage also on the bow. The next bow perk and the last bow perk is Penetrating Rapid Shot. Um, here it is. Increases armor penetration on the final arrow of Rapid Shot by 19%. Rapid Shot has three arrows, by the way. The reason why this is very strong, it's going to synergize very well with the Rapid Shot passive. Um, right here. Third shot of Rapid Shot deals 25% extra damage. So not only is it going to have extra damage, 25%, it's also going to have 15% armor penetration. So if you are an archer and you're going to be using Rapid Shot, you need to make sure that you're landing the third shot every time you have this perk. It's very, very important. It's going to make the ability very, very burst heavy. It's going to deal a crap ton of damage, okay? Next up, we're going to be talking about the... Life Staff. Life Staff has a crap ton of really, really good perks. It has the most in the game, and they are all very, very strong, okay? First one is going to be Blessed. This one just gives you more healing. <laughs> it's kind of like um, Sacred, where it increases your outgoing healing. Blessed is very, very strong. 18% healing bonus, you know. And it varies from 10 to 28% based on the tier. Very strong for healers. You're pretty much going to want this regardless. And yeah. <clears throat> Next one is going to be Energizing Splash of Light. Um, here it is. Allies hit with Splash of Light gain 14 stamina. A splash of Light applies to 5 people, including yourself in your group. Each one of you gains 14 stamina. That is very, very strong. You know, that's like more than 60 stamina. It's about 70 stamina every time you use Splash of, Splash of Light to your entire group. Now, the reason why that's strong is dodging in this game. Look at my stamina, right? I have 22 stamina and I'm still able to dodge. So if your allies get hit with 14 stamina, it's going to give them an extra dodge at the end. It's going to be very, very strong for PvP. If you're playing a healer and you're using Splash of Light, you're definitely going to want this perk. Alright, next up we have Fortified Sacred Ground. Um, let me find it. Allies healed by Sacred Ground gain Fortify, increasing their damage by 14% for 5 seconds. The reason why this is strong is because this applies after they leave Sacred Ground. So even if they only stand in your sacred ground for one second, they're going to gain 14% damage reduction afterwards. Very, very strong for PvP. Um, obviously, if your allies stay in sacred ground, it's going to last even longer, and they're going to be gaining healing as well as damage reduction, making them very hard to heal. And it's going to allow them to recover from the damage that they've taken and stay in the fight longer. Super strong PvP perk. Next one is going to be Refreshing Divine Embrace. Alright, using Divine Embrace on a target below 50% health reduces the cooldown by 46%. I'm just going to round up to 50%. So, it's going to reduce the cooldown by 50% on targets below 50% health. The reason why this is very strong, Divine Embrace already gains a lot of bonuses to people who are below 50% health, right? If the target's below 50% health, heal an additional target for the same amount. If another target is below 50% health, heal another target. <laughs> so it's going to be very, very strong because you're going to reduce the cooldown. So instead of a 6 second cooldown, you're going to get a 3 second cooldown anytime you heal somebody below 50%.
Very, very strong. This weapon has a lot of bonuses to healing people below 50%. So, you know, what can I say? Very, very strong. If you're going to be using that ability, you're going to want that perk in PvP. All right. The final perk for the Life Staff that's very, very strong for PvP is going to be Revitalizing Beacon. Um, where is it? There it is. Okay. Using Beacon increases your healing power on your shelf by 37%. For 12 seconds. If you want to play like a platin and just have a ton of self healing while dishing out damage, Beacon is already very, very strong ability. We all know that it increases your movement speed, gives you healing over time, gives you fortified. 37% more healing on yourself is nuts, guys. If you plan on playing a, pl a paladin, you need this perk. It's going to be a world of difference to you. That's all the perks for the life staff. Um, let's get into the Fire Staff while we're at it. First perk is going to be Empowering Fireball. Fireball direct impact damage is increased by 31%. Fireball already has a very high tooltip. Um, it's very large AoE. You can chuck, you can chuck this on a flag and just deal a shit ton of damage. And so 31% additional damage to everybody that gets hit by the initial impact. Very, very strong. Next one is going to be Refreshing Pillar of Fire. Let me find it. Okay. Reduces the ability cooldown by 14% per enemy hit with Pillar of Fire. Three hits max. So it's going to be about... It's going to be greater than 40%. I think 42% is what it adds up to. 42%? Reduced cooldown on your Pillar of Fire. Obviously, with Pillar of Fire, you want to be hitting multiple enemies anyways. Because you're going to be gaining more Magicka. Right? 10% of your max mana, mana per enemy hit by Pillar of Fire. So if you hit three targets, you're going to gain 30% of your max Magicka um, mana. Sorry. Again, very, very strong in Wars. You're going to be dealing... More overall damage by reducing the cooldown. And this has a 10 second cooldown. So very, very strong. All right, that's it for Fire Staff. Let's go into the Spear. Sorry. All right, Bleeding Sweep is gonna be the first perk. Sweep is obviously a very, very strong ability. It gives you a stun, or not a stun, but it gives you a knockdown. So, Coup de Gras now applies a bleed for 9.3% weapon damage for 4 seconds. Um, very, very strong. Spear already has a lot of bleeds built in. And there's going to be a lot of passives that I've already mentioned to bleeds, right? 15% increased critical chance to targets with a bleed. So, if you don't want to use any of these other abilities that apply a bleed, like Skewer, say you don't want to use Skewer in PvP, you can still get a bleed by using coup de gras, yeah, I'm sorry, sweep, and the coup de gras morph. And then you're going to be able to gain access to this passive 15% critical strike chance to that target. Very, very strong. It's going to open up new variety in builds. And very, very good if you can theorycraft a build around that. All right, next one is going to be fortifying perforate. Here it is. Gain a stack of Fortify, increasing damage absorption by 9% for 6 seconds per perforate hit. Um, perforate hits 3 times. So if you hit all 3 times, you're going to gain 27% damage reduction for 6 seconds, guys. Very, very strong. Um, perforate is also an AoE, so you can hit multiple people. So this can go even higher than 27%. Very, very strong um, if you're going to be using the Perforate skill. Next one is going to be Leeching Cyclone. I actually really like this one. This is also the last one for the Spear. 
Every hit of Cyclone heals you for 31% of your weapon damage. Cyclone is a very large AoE. You can use it on a flag and just knock people out of the flag and it's going to heal you for a lot. Um, obviously, not so good for dueling. The effectiveness goes down. But the more targets that you're fighting, the increased effectiveness this is going to get. And it's just going to keep on ramping up. There's no cap on this. So, I mean, you can heal for a crap ton if you have like 15 people around you and you use Cyclone. Very, very strong for more of a large scale PvP build. Alright, next up is going to be Ice Gauntlet. Ice Gauntlet has some very interesting perks. Um, first one is going to be Healing Tome. Gain 10% of your max health after exiting and Tome with full mana. And Tome grants you mana pretty fast and pretty and it has a lot of HP. It's pretty hard to break. So you're pretty much almost guaranteed 10% of your max health every 20 seconds. I believe that's the cooldown on a Tome. 30 seconds, I'm sorry. But still, very, very strong. End game, you're going to have around like 9,000 max health. You're going to gain 900 healing every time you use Entome and you come out with full mana. Very, very strong for PvP. Next up is going to be Iced Refresh. This is probably one of my favorites. Because... Where is it? Did I pass it? Um, here it is, okay. Reduce all ice cooldowns on killing blow by 75%. The reason why this is very, very strong, say you're fighting in large scale PVP, there's a ton of people stacked on a flag, you use ice storm, it deals a crap ton of damage and you kill one of them, you're gonna reduce the cooldown by 75%. So you're gonna be able to have two of these active at the same time. Literally, if I use ice storm, on a flag and I kill one target, I can literally throw another Ice Storm on top of it and have two of them going at the same time. Very, very strong for large scale PvP. Obviously, you can have two Ice Showers going at the same time as well. So, very, very strong. Um, every Ice Gauntlet player is going to have this perk end game PvP. You know, these are both crowd control abilities, they have long cooldowns. Being able to have multiple of them up. And both of these are AoEs. Very, very strong for PvP. Alright. That's the last perk for the Ice Gauntlet. Next up, we're going to be talking about the Great Axe. Great Axe has two perks that stood out to me. The first one is Enfeebling Maelstrom. Targets hit with Maelstrom's second attack, no reprieve. That's the second attack are hit by Weaken, reducing their damage by 14%. So let me just show you Maelstrom really quick. Right, here's Maelstrom. Here's the No Reprieve. It does the extra spin at the end. So imagine that you're fighting in large-scale PvP, you use Gravity well, you suck everybody in, and then you use Maelstrom. They're all going to have 14% um, Reduce damage. Very, very strong for large-scale PvP. 50v50, Outpost Rush. It's going to be a really, really strong perk. Um, the final one for the Great Axe is going to be um, Instatiable Gravity Well. Let me find it. I think I passed it, didn't I? Yeah. Where are you? Okay, here we go. Gain 50% of your damage with the gravity back, with gravity well back as health, and cast another burst around you on successful hit. So, gravity well, as we know, very very strong. PvP ability, you chuck it on a flag and you're going to pull everybody in, you're going to heal for 50% of the damage and you're going to cause another burst. So right now Gravity Well only has one burst, right? 
throw an axe creating a vortex at the end it bursts so you're gonna gain one burst and then you're gonna gain a second burst and you're gonna be healing for both of them and 50 percent of the damage it's aoe you're gonna be hitting a lot of targets with gravity well because it's very hard to avoid it sucks people in and you cannot dodge roll when you get hit by it for a few seconds very very strong for pvp large scale it's not going to be that good 1v1 but if you're trying to do like 50 v 50 and using the great axe it's going to be super strong all right unfortunately the next weapon is hatchet and there's only one perk on the hatchet that i like and it's going to be called keen um where are you keen berserk here it is the tooltip on this one is bugged it should say increases your crit chance by 14% while under 50% health while berserking. Um, the reason why this is very strong, berserk is obviously a very overloaded ability. Right? It gives you damage, it gives you healing, it gives you movement speed. But this passive right here, when you receive lethal damage, avoid death. So you're going to be below 50% health and you're going to be gaining 14% critical strike chance. You combine that with some of the other perks out there, like Vicious, like Keen, um, Keen Awareness. You're going to have a lot of critical strike chance while you're below 50% health. It's going to be very, very strong. You're going to be dealing a ton of damage. Hatchet already has one of the best light attack chains, so very, very strong for PvP. Like I said, I've gone through this entire list extensively, and that was the only one on the Hatchet that stood out to me. All of the rest are kind of meh. All right, next up is going to be Warhammer, and this is going to be the final weapon. All right, Warhammer has three perks that are pretty good for PvP. First one is Leeching Path of Destiny. Um, here it is. Heal for 28% of the damage dealt from Path of Destiny. <laughs> Path of Destiny is a large AoE line. You can hit like 15 people on a flag whenever you use this. It's going to be a ton of healing, okay? <clears throat> Tons of healing. Super awesome ability for large-scale PvP. If you are using Path of Destiny, which you should be, you should have this perk. And this is an equipment perk, by the way. You can see you can get it on weapons, and you can also get it on armor. All right. Next up is going to be Repulsing Clear Out. I actually really like this one. Okay, clear out knocks back targets an additional 141%. I believe the base is four meters. Yeah, so four meters, so 150%, we're just gonna round up. It's gonna be like 10 meters, right? I believe this has a radius of five meters. Yeah, so you're gonna be knocking people away from one line, so the first line to the back line of this ability. So if you're fighting on a flag and you use clear out, I'm just gonna heavy attack. Say that's my clear out, I'm gonna be knocking them basically off of the flag. If you're doing 50 v 50 where you all have to fight on a point, it's gonna be very, very strong because it's gonna prevent your opponents from capturing the point. So in PVP, this perk is gonna be really, really good, especially if you plan on doing like a more tanky frontline um, build that's kind of focused on playing the objectives. If you're doing, if you're going to be doing objective-based PvP gameplay, this is going to be very, very strong. All right, and then the final perk for today, since we've gone through all of the weapons and we're just on the Warhammer, is Thundering Shockwave. Um, Thundering Shockwave. Shockwave applies Ren, reducing the temp, reducing the target's damage absorption by 19% for 10 seconds. 10 seconds is insanely long, and also Shockwave is a really really good AOE stun, right? Um, I believe it has a four meter radius. Yeah. So all of the people that you hit with Shockwave. They're all going to be taking 19% more damage for the next uh, 10 seconds. Like, that is absurd. In large-scale PvP, so freaking strong. 
Um, if you have a group of damage dealers behind you who can follow up, it's gonna like Warhammer is already kind of a weapon that's just designed to set up kills. If you have this perk active, you're gonna be able to set up even more kills for your allies behind you. Very very strong. All right, so those are all of the perks. Obviously, like I said in the beginning of this video, um, this is going to be subject to change. Amazon is going to add new perks later on. They're going to be changing some of the values, I'm sure. So yeah, if you learned something new, like the video, um, share it with your friends, share it with your company. I am not a content creator. Um, I'm not a streamer. I just noticed that a lot of the current content creators out there we're kind of ignoring perks, and perks are very, very strong. While we're waiting for the game to come out, a lot of people should be theory crafting what perks they're going to be wanting on their gear. And so that's kind of why I uploaded this video. Um, I don't plan on releasing content for this game. I just plan on playing, to be honest. But if you do want to subscribe, just note that I'm probably only going to be doing a video like once every six months or so. Um, you can also check out my Twitch, twitch.tv slash timedazzler. I don't plan on streaming. You can probably catch a stream once every three to four months. Um, what you can do is you can join my Discord. There will be a link in the description. I plan on playing on the Thool server. If the names of the servers from the beta are gonna be going over to live, I'll be playing on the Thule server. It's going to be the official role-playing server for the North America East Coast, okay? Um, yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Um, I hope you learned something new. My name is Time Dazzler, and I will see you in Eternum. Take care, everybody. Bye. <laughs>